The pacification, well, this was an attempt by Poland to intimidate Ukrainians. The Minister of the Interior, Piratsky, sent out the cavalry against community and political activists. This wasn't against whole villages. They were very selective operations. Under various pretexts, they beat up the activists. Some of the activists perished. I was a young boy when my father told me. They knocked his stomach out. My father was the head of the cultural society Prosvita, the head of the agricultural cooperative union. In short, my father was a community activist. The pacification in western Ukraine was carried out in this way. At night, the soldiers and the police surrounded the villages, herded the people into Prosvita halls, beat them so mercilessly that flesh would come off their bones. Victims of flogging and heavy beatings are not allowed to seek help from doctors or get hospital care. Women and children are raped by the Polish cavalry. Kerosene is thrown into drinking wells and grain supplies. Money and jewelry are stolen from every household. In the Ternopil Library alone, 40,000 volumes are destroyed. Although numerous protests and reports are filed by Ukrainians to the League of Nations, almost nothing is done to alleviate the suffering of Western Ukrainians under Polish rule. In Western Ukraine, one couldn't print anything about the pacification. But students who traveled outside the country to study, or tourists from Western Ukraine who traveled abroad, informed the West about the pacification. So that in the West, you could learn more about the pacification in Western Ukraine than in Western Ukraine itself. As violence increases, a total of 30 Ukrainian deputies in the Polish government condemn Marshal Pilsudski's dictatorial policies. They too are arrested. Several Ukrainian newspapers were published in Western Ukraine. There was even a daily, Dilo. In Galicia, one could publish many books that could not be published in Soviet Ukraine, because after all, Poland was obliged to grant some rights to Ukrainians, by Versailles especially, and later by the Treaty of Riga. So newspapers were published, but they were always censored, which meant that whole columns would appear as white space. But the pacification did not intimidate anyone. It only radicalized even further the relations between Poles and Ukraine. And it must be said that the 1930s was a period of increasing hatred between the two peoples.